Hey everyone, I'm Jordan and this is how I prepare for the new academic year. If you're new to my channel, welcome, but if you've already been subscribed and viewing, welcome back. So if you don't already know, I'm a sophomore at Harvard University majoring in physics with minors in computer science and education studies. Yeah, so this video is actually sponsored by Chegg, so thank you so much. I had such a great time, or as great of a time as you can. So I've been using Chegg and their resources, specifically the study pack, in different ways to help me prepare for the academic year, and I can't wait to show you guys what I did. So if you're in your last like kind of two years of high school, but especially if you're in college, the first thing you need to do is obviously pick out your classes. In order to do this, you need to be really well informed on the general education and concentration or major requirements that you have to fulfill. So as a physics major, I have to take an intro physics sequence and a math sequence, so I'm gonna fulfill those requirements or work on those requirements this semester. But as someone who's getting a secondary in education, I also have to take this foundational course. So I'm really excited to be taking this gen ed about excellence and equity or equity and excellence in American K through 12 schools. I think it's going to be really, really fun. Whether you're a high school or college student, there will definitely be a deadline you have to meet. So make sure you enroll in your classes by the deadline so you don't have to pay any extra fees. The second thing that you have to do is put all of the important dates in your planner. So you can find all of these dates by looking in the syllabus for every single class you have. Currently, I'm using the Passion Planner for this year. I like it because it has like a nice weekly function where you could like put out all the hours and stuff like that and what you want to do. But if you're not into scheduling and stuff like that, feel free to get a regular weekly or daily planner, whatever works for you. Doing this will of course keep you really organized, you'll never be behind on work, and you'll always know what's coming up. As someone who participates in a lot of extracurriculars, especially a lot that take me off campus, it's really important for me to really know what I have and plan ahead because if I don't, then I may come back from a pageant with like a whole lot of work waiting for me and that's never fun. Still on the syllabus of all of your classes or syllabi, I guess, you'll see any required textbooks you'll need for the class. So typically, I would say don't buy the textbook straight from the bookstore. That's a rookie mistake. You'll spend so, so, so much money. So something I would actually encourage you to do is check out Chegg on their like little book tab. All you need is your ISBN number, which you can get by just looking up the book, or you could use the author's name or the title of the book and just search it up and Chegg will give you some options for renting or buying and usually you can save a whole lot of money, so definitely check that out. So for this semester, I have required textbooks for physics and math, but not Chinese. We have like a course pack, which is kind of like printed out slides, and then for my gen ed, we have books, and you could actually find like regular books all over the place, we'll see, but I'm definitely not gonna get them from the bookstore. So the next thing you'll need to do for all of your classes is set up your notebooks and get your supplies. So obviously some students prefer digital while others prefer handwritten and like physical copies. You can do whatever you want. I think this year I'm going to have written notebooks for three of my classes. That's probably gonna be physics, math, and Chinese and then my gen ed is going to be digital because they want us to like submit classwork during the zoom but obviously do what's best for you like for me I really love digital notes but sometimes I want to switch it out and I really like graph paper for Chinese because then I can like write the characters in little boxes and it just feels really neat and organized the next I'm going to be talking about what I'm going to do for each class and I'll be taking a writing based class of so kind of like English it's like my gen ed a math based class because I'm taking math, a physics class which is science, and then a language class. So if you guys need help preparing for any of those classes because they're like general core subjects, then definitely stick around and see what you could take and what you can use. So as a physics major, I've been getting a lot of questions from especially high school juniors asking me how to study for physics, if I have any tips for either AP or IB, and I have to tell you guys something. I am not naturally good at physics. Like the only reason why I get like decent to good grades in physics is because I work really hard and I'm really passionate about the subject, so I just want you guys to know that. The most important thing when it comes to doing good in physics is just doing a lot of practice and truly understanding the material and really holding yourself accountable to that. So before I take any physics class, before the beginning of every semester, I really take the time to review the material I've already learned and solidify that, as well as start to get a little ahead of the class, try to look at the lecture notes, 
um, but also look for online resources. So Chegg Study is really great for this. When you go to the website, and I'll put the link here, um, you can see on the top there's like a practice tab, and I'll put a screen recording because again, bad descriptions. If you click on the practice tab, like you can scroll down and see some subjects. So I obviously am going to pick physics, and they have this really thorough and in-depth intro to physics like sequence, and the class I'm taking now is going to be electromagnetism and like waves and whatever. So I'm starting to preview that so I won't be completely lost when the semester starts next week. When I finish reviewing a few of the lecture notes and things like that, and I'm feeling a little bit confident or reviewing the textbook and stuff I can go onto the practice site and I can answer some questions obviously since I haven't had like a whole lot of in-depth lessons or anything I don't expect to get the question right all the time but that's totally okay really the purpose for me with this is just getting exposure to the kinds of problems I'm gonna answer on exams because in college exams mean so much so they have a lot of STEM like math classes and also business and accounting and some engineering physics biochem and all that stuff so if you're taking any one of those classes or a related subject, I would definitely say refresh on your knowledge, do some practice problems, so when you go into this year, you will have solidified knowledge and will be ready to learn something new. Like I said, doing well in physics is really about doing practice problems and reviewing examples and things like that. So when the semester actually starts and I'm doing lectures and I'm seeing problems, I think it's really helpful for me to go on Chegg and look up the textbook solutions to problems, even if it's not the exact problem that we're doing in class. Because I don't know if you guys know, if you're not a college student, like you wouldn't know. But in college, when you're doing like math or physics, especially like physics, you do some practice problems in class, but you mainly do them as a class. Like you don't really get the time to practice what you've learned in the setting, like around professors and stuff like that. So it really just comes down to doing the homework and doing the best you can, but how you do on those questions really does like affect your grade. You're really getting a lot more examples than you would if you just like did your classwork alone. And even if you're not like going through and solving the whole entire problem, I find it really helpful to look at the problem and then like write out the equations I think I would use for it and then going through the solutions if I don't have time to like do the complete problem. So my approaches to math and physics are kind of similar, which makes sense because like physics is a math-based science. Um, but math is also just like really problem-oriented and making sure you understand the material and that you're able to apply the knowledge that you have acquired through like studying in class time. So with this, I find Chegg's study like textbook solutions really, really helpful. This year, I'm going to be taking linear algebra, which is called like Math 21B at, here at Harvard. In general, I think it's really helpful to go into a class knowing what to expect, especially because with math, like you may be in geometry and then you go to like pre-calc and you're like, what is this? It's completely unrelated. So you want to make sure that you're going in with your eyes wide open. Going through textbook solutions is definitely really helpful with this because you literally see the kinds of questions that you're going to be asked on exams. As I said before, the textbook solutions isn't really about finding the exact answer for me, really learning the method. Further into the semester, I will definitely be getting like the 30 minute Q&A expert help because if anyone who has taken like a physics or math class is watching this, you definitely know how frustrating it can be to be staying up like into the late hours of the night, just really frustrated and feeling like you cannot answer a problem when you only have one left. So you don't want to turn in the assignment incomplete, but you also just don't know how to start the problem. This is where the expert Q&A comes in. The expert Q&A, and same thing with the textbook solutions, they're not about like giving you the answer. They won't do that. They're going to walk you through step by step, like through the process, what it takes to get to the final answer. So you're actually learning while receiving the help, which is the way it should be because you're at school to learn. To prepare specifically for my math class at Harvard this year, we have to do a warm-up P-set. P-set is basically short for problem set. Problem set is just a worksheet of problems. So there's a P-set zero that is due on the first day of classes. I've already started to work on that, and I'm pretty much done. I think I have one part of a problem left. For this class specifically, I definitely wanted to make sure I knew how to use like the RF function on my calculator because I did it for like four years, but everyone thought I did. So definitely get used to your calculator if you have one. I have a TI-84 or something like that. Like that. If you're a high schooler watching this and you're looking to buy a new calculator, make sure you check the SAT like College Board website because there are actually some calculators that you can't use for the SAT and it would be like a real shame if you got a calculator but you had to get a second one because like they don't allow you to take the test with it. 
So here's some advice for math that I guess could also be applied to physics and any other problem solving based class. Like you want to make sure that you kind of like know your connections. Like who is taking the class, any of your friends, any like former classmates and things like that who has already taken the class and finished it and kind of know what's up. There, like just in case if you get really really stuck or you need a friend group or study group or something like that you have people to like fall back on these kinds of classes are really collaborative and if like you can't like yeah you wouldn't be able to do the problems alone you should always be able to do problems alone you should always hold yourself accountable to that standard but just know that it can be really really frustrating doing these homeworks i know at harvard specifically all of the homework assignments are harder than the classworks and they do that on purpose so you kind of learn how to apply the basic strategies to learn some more like complex applications i guess which is great and all but it do be leading to like late night 2 a.m work things so but yeah you want to make sure you're getting the help that you need and chegg can definitely be that solution for you so if you need help if you're really struggling with math click the link in bio or link in description i mean and you can see all the resources that Chegg has for you guys. So now we're gonna talk about language classes. So this year I'm taking Intermediate Modern Chinese, which is Chinese 120A here at Harvard. If you have watched some of my videos already, you may know that I've been studying Mandarin since eighth grade, but I took a break from my first year of college and I'm currently like in between the intermediate and the advanced but then there are some very basic words I just don't know. So I'm just gonna stick with the intermediate and we're gonna see how that goes. It's typically like a second year language class here at Harvard. So if you're taking a language class this year, whether you're in high school or college, you need to make flashcards. There is no way you can succeed in a language without having flashcards. They are the most simple and effective, cost effective even, way of studying. And this is even more true when you're learning a character based language like Chinese, Japanese, Korean, rather than like a phonetic spelling one, like Spanish or whatever, like you get what I mean. So to prepare for class, we actually have like this course pack and they've uploaded the vocabulary words we're gonna be learning for the first like two to three weeks. And I'm actually gonna make flashcards for those right now. So Chegg has a great platform where you can make those flashcards and make the different sets, name and organize them for each class. It's really, really nice, clean, simple, and if you're using all the other services that Chegg offers, I think it's just really nice to have all of your study resources in one place on one site, so definitely check that out. When it comes to Chinese specifically, something I like to do with my flashcards is review them when I'm like on the way to class. I mean, now with Corona, it's like a little different, but if I'm like walking somewhere, I'll just review the flashcards and like I will write the character like in the air. Like, I'll just be walking or on the bus and I'm like, okay, I need to like remember this character. Okay, I'm good. And then I like pronounce it in my head and stuff like that. But I think it's just really, really easy, fast. Do it every day for like 10, 15, 20 minutes. That's why I say do it while you're like on a walk so then the time kind of goes by quickly. Uh, but yeah, that will really like help you so much. I was the most fluent when it came to like speaking and writing when I was doing flashcards like 20 minutes every single day. Something I also want to do is start writing letters to myself or like diary entries in Chinese because one, I'll be learning vocabulary words that I would use in my regular day life, you know? Um, and two, just to really practice with like writing, it's just really important that you're practicing the skill every day. Like that's why, at least at Harvard, all of our language classes meet every single day whether that's like a lecture or a discussion section. So as I said before, I'm using a physical graph paper notebook for this class, but I might actually switch to the digital graph notebook that I have on GoodNotes, um, just because, I don't know, just because it might look cleaner, who knows, but I think writing is an important skill in Chinese, so I'm definitely not like just gonna type my notes ever. That's just not something I do. So the last class I'm taking this semester is a writing-based class and it is a gen ed called Equity and Excellence in American K-12 Schools and it is a foundational course that will fulfill my credit for the education secondary. So I want to be a professor and I actually want to be a good teacher. But to prepare for this course, they actually gave us an assignment ahead of time. So of course, if you have any like pre-class assignments, definitely do those. Check the syllabus to see what readings you need to get, what books and blah, blah, blah. The assignment was actually a lot of fun. Like I was on, I was on my laptop. It's like a digital thing. And 
you had to like go on canvas and it took you to this other website and i think it was basically created by the harvard school of education it's like i don't know makes sense but in it we were basically given a case study for this kid named ava not ava for the student names ada ada a d a whoa wait i can do asl you ready a d a <gasps> i did that okay anyway anyway so yeah we had this for ada and we had to basically assess what like the next best move for her would be because she was in eighth grade she was already left back she was an old eighth grader but she was still reading like several years below her grade level so it was just like really getting into ethical dilemma so that was a really fun class if you want to write an essay about that go ahead i guess even though the actual papers aren't due for like a month, like I think the first one is due in October, like mid-October, the final one is due in December, and then we have like an assignment that's like a little bit creative in November. Like even though those deadlines are way in advance, I still find it really helpful to look at the prompt so I kind of know what I'm getting myself into. And it's something I just wanna let you guys know is that your college most likely has a writing center and this writing center is staffed with all these people who can just help you like get started and just say like okay we're looking at the prompts what can you actually write about and how can you structure your essay but after you finish doing that i think it's always really helpful to have someone proofread your work for citations grammar punctuation all those kinds of things because you definitely don't want to get caught plagiarizing even by accident because that could get you a fat zero. A great resource for this is of course check writing and they check for grammar, punctuation, any kind of unintentional plagiarism. Definitely check that out, some of your papers there. So you want to make sure you're handing in good, honest, high quality work that reflects your best self. And teachers can tell, or not teachers, in college, professors can tell if you're like writing stuff at the very, very last minute and if you're planning on applying to grad school like I am, you're definitely going to need those recommendations. So putting in the work and putting in the effort, investing time and money, resources into getting a really, really good paper and just really good work in the class will help you and will really go far. Another note though, if you are trying to get a recommendation, submitting great work isn't enough. Like you actually have to go to office hours and talk to them and get to know them and stuff. So just keep that in mind. So now that you've picked your classes, set up your notebooks, put all the dates in your planners, and have done everything that you could to prepare for the classes ahead of time, now it's time to get to the really fun, cute, aesthetic part of like learning and studying and stuff. So there are three things that you need to do for all classes before classes actually start, or like within the first week of classes. The first thing is to make a work schedule. So I actually make two. The first one, and I do this on Google Sheets by the way, the first work schedule is really just like all of my classes, so lectures, sections, labs, things like that. Anytime I have to be in front of like the Zoom camera and stuff like that, actively engaged, I'm gonna put that there. Then I have a work schedule, and in the work schedule, I put in the actual times I'm gonna do homework. I also put in extracurriculars, meals, and things like that, just so I know and can prove to myself that I actually have enough time for everything on my plate. Even if I don't actually stick to the schedule, like obviously I should, but even if I don't, it's completely okay because it's really just showing myself that I have time to do everything because I could always just like switch it to do what I want to do. The next thing you want to do is start forming study groups. And obviously you may have to wait until like the first two classes to start figuring this out but especially when it comes to physics, math, biology, chemistry, like STEM, problem solving based classes, you need a study group. You cannot get through those classes alone. Don't even try. Find people that you're like cool with, people you maybe like know the names of, people you've seen around on campus. Just say like, hey, do you wanna like study together? Do you wanna work on problems together? But before you do this, make sure you look at the collaboration policy for each class. This will usually be on the syllabus. Because in Chinese, we're actually not allowed to collaborate with anyone. Like, obviously, if I want to, I can practice with, like, my roommate, who's a native Chinese speaker. But it would be really unfair for me to have her, like, review, like, my Chinese essay or something like that. So make sure you check the collaboration policy because you don't want to get in trouble. So the very last thing I do to prepare for classes is create morning and night routines. Usually, like, I don't stick to these, but I think it's kind of fun to have one anyway. I think the main thing for me is just, like, again, not sticking to it exactly, but just showing that I have enough time to do it. So 
like my ideal morning routine, I don't even know. That would be like waking up, writing for two hours, and like going to take a shower, brush my teeth, and then have breakfast. Like that would probably be my morning routine, and I would break off like three and a half hours for that because the writing is already two. But you just want to make sure that you're doing that morning is like whatever. To me, like the night routine is more important because I actually meditate every night. I actually have a 201 day streak on Headspace, so go me. But I think it's just really nice to do something you actually enjoy before going to bed. That was a piece of advice that the assistant principal of guidance at my high school gave me, Mr. Nasser. I hope if you're watching this by some chance, I hope you're enjoying your life, I guess. But yeah, I really like to meditate. I like to journal at the beginning of last year, actually throughout the entire semester of last year, like fall 2019, I listed three things as grateful for every day. And then I journaled a little bit like regularly, like actually just journal like full length stuff in the spring semester. And now I wanna get back to it after taking a break throughout the summer. You just really need to figure out what is best for you as always do what's best for you like i'm a morning person and by morning i mean like super early like if i wake up at 7 or 7 30 then it's like okay whatever but like i'm a real morning person when i wake up at five in the morning because no one else is awake i'm easily distracted so that's the best time for me to get to a do work so last semester like in my prime or like last year not last semester like i was going to sleep at 9 p.m and waking up at 5 a.m and i was just so productive i had nice little routines so do what works for you watch some youtube videos on how to make a night routine or how to make a morning routine remember like it doesn't have to be complicated you don't have to do yoga or exercise every morning like just do what works for you because the routines really help also picking out your clothes the night before do that so those are all my tips for you guys i hope you enjoyed this how i prepare for the school semester i'm really excited for fall 2020 spring 2021 living on campus is going to be really good for me this semester but if you enjoy this video please like comment share subscribe all that stuff if you are taking any of these classes or classes similar to them so english language math science definitely check out Chegg. the link is in the description um, but yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.